beer. Bring barrels full of brown ale, brazenly British and bursting with barley, beastily hot for ball biting bitterness. Bring bottles of blonde Belgian brews brimming with bubbles. Bitty yet beautiful Bavarian bites and bock, bold hints of banana bright in the bouquet. Bring black bellied stouts with burntish bite, but don't bring me that boundary road bollocks, big business brews, batches of vile bought by brawny blokes who play ball sports. Embolden my brain to begin befriending brand new beer buddies. Bulk my boyish body with liquid bread brought back from benevolent barman's abode. Bring me a bottomless pint of the best and bloody well bring me a beer. And that, that my friends, is the beginning of a series of poems about my various addictions in life. Um, yes, I sort of, I, I, I thought, how can I link my, my sort of wide-ranging set of poems? And, and I sort of came to the conclusion that I basically only write about things that I'm addicted to. Um, so that sort of leads me on to my first poem, which is not perhaps directly, directly about me, per se, um, but it sort of it discusses the, the trap, the pitfall of becoming obsessed with fame and, um, and the price you have to pay for that. Um, so here we go. It's called Devil in the Sack. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Better watch your back for a cut no slack because in case you didn't know, he's a devil in the sack. Watch him line up for a sack race With a most determined track face off the mark He doesn't let grace shooting past the rest Bounding forward with searing haste Clenching sack around his waist The man you wished you hadn't faced With whom you wish you hadn't messed He ruins every children's party The kids just watch him jump and dart He knows it from the very start He's got it in the bag he has an athlete's diet, feeds on mashed potato, only needs the sacks because at such high speeds he wears them through to rags. All those successes brought the ladies faster than a new Mercedes. To use the phrase he's got it made, he's found himself a Russian. She races too, she is his co-sack, and when he's run his race she'll go smack him on the back, say, oh Jack, she's rather prone to gushing. Of course he does the same for her at women's races, he will spur her on while getting quite a stir displaying dedication. But all success has got its price. Their reproductive health was nice, though this they had to sacrifice for steroids augmentation. <laughs> of living gametes there's no sign and there will be no sporting line. Their trophy cabinets polish shine as all their consolation. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down. Better cut him slack to be a devil in the sack. He's had to put his hormones completely out of whack. Whew. Thank you. <laughs> right. Next addiction. Online shopping. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. It's been a hard day. Oh, I might just, might just flick on. Like, I, I could find a bargain. Uh, yep. And then the evening's gone and you feel terrible about, about yourself and um, yeah, then you go to bed and wake up and do it in the morning. <laughs> it's life. Um, so this first one, it's sort of, it's, it really covers a whole range of things. Uh, love, loss, bereavement, online shopping, it's got it all. So here we go. All right. It's called Umbrella. In Wellington, one has to wonder why anyone would make the blunder of thinking brollies worth their money. Now, admittedly, it's never sunny, but why go through humiliation fighting off precipitation with a piece of nylon on a stick? <laughs> now, surely no one's quite so thick to think that in a wintry blast that spindly shield would ever last. Now, although those were my thoughts, you see, I then had an epiphany. I learnt about those windproof ones they peddle off for princely sums. My mind began to race. Suppose I 
am an umbrella kind of guy. Just imagine sitting pretty. A rainy day, no more a pity. Freedom when the weather's shitty. And I couldn't be convinced much more. I bought one from an online store. A few days wait, it was delivered. As I unpacked, I almost quivered. <clears throat> My Brolly and I, a deep connection. How our delight in its erection, watching every separate section slowly rise in each direction. Object of my heart's affection. It always brought a touch of class. Its air vents let the wind just pass straight through. Without its canopy, I feared that I would simply be another person in that queue buying coats from Kathmandu. Alas, I soon was too attached. And so, with grief, a plan was hatched. I wrote a letter saying, Honey, I even love you when it's sunny. But nonetheless, I think that space will always have a vital place in any good relationship. And don't be scared, my love won't slip. And just to make sure things are clear, I am not having an affair with the sunscreen on the bathroom shelves. Just a bit of time spent by ourselves will make the bond between us stronger. And I'm sure it won't be any longer than, I'd say, a week or so. And, and this is hard for me too, you know. But let's go and put our love away and save it for a rainy day. Thank you. <laughs> Online shopping part two. I'm afraid I haven't remembered this one. Um, I'm not the young man I used to be, so <laughs> mentally I'm not quite with it. It's, I'm, I'm telling you folks, it's all downhill after you hit 19. <laughs> um, so here we go. I spend my evenings glued online to satisfy a perverse addiction. I hunch up close with curling spine, then scroll through pages with conviction. To satisfy a perverse addiction, I search Tweed jacket, 36. Then scroll through pages with conviction and hope I'll find some wool that fits. I search Tweed jacket, 36. In wardrobe fantasies, I'm lost. I hope I'll find some wool that fits. I'm quick to justify the cost. In wardrobe fantasies, I'm lost. So, only glance at cost of shipping. I'm quick to, ju to justify the cost. It's only money. Willpower slipping. So, only glance at cost of shipping because... I'm saving if I buy it. It's only money, willpower slipping before I cave and can't deny it. Because I'm saving if I buy it, I hunch up close with curling spine. Before I cave and can't deny it, I spend my evenings glued online. Thank you. Right, so here we are, final addiction of the day. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we've all been here with this addiction. Um, I'm quite into rap music. Um, <laughs> it's pro probably one of my, my naughtier pleasures. Um, but I need something to, to listen to when I'm sitting down with my knitting. So, <laughs> and that's, that's not actually a joke, that's, that's quite true. Um, so, I thought one day, well, uh, I'm going to write some rap music. And turns out I can't write rap music. Um, however, I did manage to make a poem, which is a rap-inspired poem. It's sort of rap-flavoured. Sort of, it tastes, tastes like the ghetto. Um, so, here we are. I'm sure you'll all be will be very familiar with its subject. Um, it's called Bitches and Hoes. <laughs> I'm planting my geraniums, but finding with these lazy limbs that all resolve is straining thin. This garden's far too large for me, or someone come take charge from me with gardener's argy bargery. I scratch upon my head and think, oh, who could save me from the brink and get these roses in the pink? I've spent all day in sweating slog and overalls work like a dog. Then poof, there goes my mental fog. 
I find a close SPCA, see all those bitches on display, proclaim, you've got a home today. Then off to Bunnings, find some hose, remark I need 16 of those, plus seeds and garden mulch, I suppose. Heading home for work, now witches digging out some lengthy ditches down and dirty with those bitches. Say what? Yeah, bitches and hoes. Where they learn to garden? Well, nobody knows. Say what? Yeah, bitches and hoes. Two are clipping hedges while the other one mows. Say what? Yeah, bitches and hoes. Their doggy doos are put to use, no need to dispose. I make sure that each bitch is spayed before I grab each bitch a spade and weekly check each bitch is paid. And though, they, and though that each may snark and fight and growl when tensions start to spike, you'll see that they're all bark, no bite. I look out on my garden, smile, relax here, simply watching while these bitches do things doggy style. <laughs> and though my plot's now so pristine, this ever ready canine team is not content to sit and beam. Each bitch is focused, keen to work, determined through genetic quirk. I give a business-minded smirk. I post around a mailbox flyer, it reads, Fine bitches up for hire, it's every gardener's heart's desire. We have a meteoric rise, the sound financial enterprise, the team's not hard to recognise. Say what? Yeah, bitches and hoes. Botanic, don't panic, these bitches are pros. Say what? Yeah, bitches and hoes. Every dog know that you reap what you sow. Say what? Yeah, bitches and hoes. Struck it lucky with the puppies, an investment that grows. Thank you.